Howdy folks, Kevin here. In this video, we're going to be covering debugging and not the browser debug command. I already have a video on that if you want to take a watch uh, link to it. But we're going to look at debugging in Visual Studio Code or VS Code or code, whatever you want to call it. Getting debugging going in VS Code is more than just browser debug. We're talking about actually stopping your test in the middle of a test and stepping through, you get to see all the variables. So no more console log out your variable names and everything like that. You actually get to see the variables already in a properties window, and then you can step through your code line by line. It's pretty, pretty cool. So let's get started. So I've got Visual Studio Code open. I need to just call it VS Code. I don't know why I keep calling it Visual Studio Code, but uh, VS Code open. And this is the version I'm on in case that changes. It's September 2019. Uh, I know a lot of people watch these videos a couple years later and they see that it looks nothing like what the video is because it's been updated and everything. So be aware, September 2019. I've got a set of tests and these are tests for my upcoming book on WebDriver IO that's coming out. And one of the tests that we have, we're just going to want to debug is this login form. So something is going wrong in this auth.login when it gets the URL, it's not including login. And that's just a pain in the butt. And normally what I'd have to do is I'd say, okay, auth.login is in the auth. So I need to open auth page. And then I need to put a browser debug somewhere in here, not too early because then I miss it and not too late because then the error gets thrown or, or I, I miss what's going on. So I'd have to do that. Well, wouldn't it be cool if I could just hit F9 and I get that little red dot to show. And now when I run my code, it's gonna stop at this line and I can go into that auth login function and, and check all the stuff out. Well, you can do that using VS Code debugging. Okay, so how do we get this all set up? It's relatively straightforward. And I say relatively because it really depends on, on how complex your setup is going. I haven't tested this with Cucumber or anything, but I have done it using TypeScript and that was a bit more complicated to work, but I did get it to work and maybe I'll do a video on that later. But today I'm gonna to keep it simple. It's just a plain, no JS project, no TypeScript, no Cucumber, it just uses Mocha, things like that. So I'll go to my configurations and I'm going to add a configuration and apparently it's gonna download something. Okay, it had to download something, I don't know why, but you'll probably have to run into the same thing. So here's my configuration and I can start building off of this, but I don't want to. I'm going to go back to the WebDriver IO page and I'm going to copy this code straight in, paste that code in. And now what this is going to do is it's going to run the selected spec file and that file is going to be the file that you have open. So when I run the debug from this file, it's going to run from here. Make sure you're selected on this uh, file because otherwise it's going to try and run like your launch.json file and it's going to fail and all that kind of stuff. This is important. Auto attach child processes. This lets WebDriver IO know how to attach the debugger to the Node.js instance that it's running. This is your path to WebDriver IO. There's one other thing we could add if we wanted to. You can set environment variables here. So I could set debug equals to true. Debug true is useful if you have in your configuration file a flag that turns on or off headless mode or sets other features uh, when running through there. Okay, so what I did is I actually went ahead and do this because it makes a lot of sense to have if the environment variable of debug is set to true, then set the timeout to a much higher number than the normal minute. And this is going to allow us time to walk through the code without the test timing out. So I'll save that file over here and I will have that in here as needed. And why is it mad at me? It wants a string, so I'll change that over to a string. And now it's happier and I can save this. And now I've got it set up to run. That's it for getting the configuration set up, if I remember correctly. Well, let's give it a shot. I could be wrong. So I've got my breakpoint here. And now to run, I'm going to press F5. I'm gonna cross my fingers that this works because I've kind of forgotten how. So now it has paused execution right here. Let's move this window over. So now I can kind of see in the background and I'll make this a little bit smaller. So please bear with me as I waste your time. Now I've got, if you didn't see it, there's this debug toolbar up here that lets you do a few things. I could just hit play and it would continue on through the test. I could step over this function. So that means just move to the next line. I can dive into the function, which is what I'm gonna want to do. Or I can step out of it, which in this case, it doesn't make sense we'll get there restart my test or just stop altogether. I'm going to step into my function. 
I said step into it. Hmm. That's not good. Okay, I'm back. What happened was I had a bunch of old Chrome driver instances and VS Code does not like that because I think it tries to attach to those old ones and just flips out. So it flipped out, I had to close VS Code. This is why I say it's relatively easy because these little weird things trip you up and it's no fun. Okay, so now we're back here and I'm gonna jump back, I'm gonna step into my function because this is the function that's causing me trouble. Now it worked, it took me to the login function. Here's my email and my password that get passed in. Let's get on to the actual test. So now we're on this.email.set value. I don't wanna step into this because that's gonna jump into the set value function, which is part of WebDriver IO. I don't really care about that. So I'm gonna step over this function call. So it's gonna let the function call run and it froze up again. I don't know why, what's going on? Did it time out? It shouldn't have timed out. Oh, it's just all frozen up now, isn't it? Okay, so I'm trying this again. One thing that I think, I didn't put the dot only there, so it only runs that test. We'll see, maybe it was something with how I stepped over. Got this set back, let's step over again. And there it fills the value. Now it goes to the next line, we wanna step over again, good. Now we want to step over one more time. So it's setting my email, it's setting my value, that is all good. Now it clicks, okay. Email or password is invalid. Here's my issue. This account isn't set up for some reason. This should not be saying email or password is invalid. This should be taking me to the login page. What's happening, and now I can I can just exit out of this because I know what's going on. I don't wanna wait until, so I'm gonna do a step out of, and now it's gonna step out of this login function. I don't have to keep stepping through, and this is really useful if you have a lot of steps and you just wanna exit out. Now I'm at here and I'm just going to, let's just hit play because I know what's going on now. The issue is it says that it expected the URL to not include login. That wasn't the real issue. The real issue is this user isn't loading in correctly. That's what's going on there. Now, if you do want to use browser debug, you can use it like you normally do. Browser.debug. And what you want to make sure you're doing is you don't mix your browser debug with VS Code debugging. So I'm going to turn off that breakpoint and then I'm going to run my tests again. And there is a reason you'd still want to use browser debug and that's to send your own commands. If you want to figure out if certain elements exist on the page. So here I want to see, okay, is it actually setting, like does that element actually exist on the page? So I'll do is existing down there at the bottom and run, you see it's true, cool. So we'll just close out of there. And now it's going to fail again because the user isn't set up. So you can still use browser debug as you want to. Uh, but in this case, I like using the breakpoint because I don't have to do as much typing. And for the most part it works, but for some reason it erred out. I think it was because I didn't have dot only set up or I was just taking too long, not really sure. Um, that's kind of how I felt about using this tool is I'm not entirely sure how it's all working together or this specific way to get it working right but I do know that in many cases I can get it working right with enough uh, magic and aligning of the stars. It does work right, right, and when it does, I get really cool stuff like my variable names, my call stack, or not my variable names, my actual variable values at that certain point, my call stack and everything. So now I can remove that and get to fixing this test. That is debugging with VS Code. There is an example file out there using uh, the WebDriver.io DevTools example project. Just to give you one quick look at what I did for TypeScript, I had a pre-launch task that runs npm pretest. I'm, I'm not using my npm test that I set up. I have a package JSON that runs the TypeScript compile command and also does a couple of other things. And so I have a pre-launch task and then I call my wdio.js just like before. I pass in my spec because the file name that you're gonna be editing is a TypeScript file, a TS extension. I have to get to the JavaScript extension version of that. So I can basically get to that by excluding the build path. I still know my relative file name or my file directory name is gonna be the same and I can get my base name of the file with no extension and then just add the .js and then everything else is pretty much the same. So that's how I use this with pretest. If you do need to do npm test, 
I'm uncertain that that's going to work because the issue is this auto attach to child processes will, instead of attaching to the WDIO.js program, it attaches to NPM and it doesn't get passed through. So you really need to call web, WebDriver IO directly when you're running through this instead of trying to run it through NPM test. But if you do need to do any pre-launch tasks, you can learn what the pre-launch task property does. Basically, you you can run any script in your NP, in your package JSON by its name through here. Um, this is just based off of I have a package JSON and in it I have a script called pretest, so it runs that. So you can you can run it through there. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Hopefully this is helpful for you if you're using VS Code. Hopefully it makes some sort of sense. If it's completely unclear, maybe I'll just re-record this whole video and uh, re-upload it. But I was just trying to get something out there because I haven't been as productive with my videos because I'm trying to get everything perfect, but I'm realizing maybe it's better not to get everything perfect, but just to get out there uh, for y'all to consume and enjoy. So until next time, have fun testing.